In a fast forward world that's turning digital, photographer Steve McCurry is pausing to document the end of an era. He's going to shoot the very last roll of Kodachrome film to come off the assembly line. There's just one question. What do you do with the last roll of this legendary film? Probably the best film ever made. That's good, that's good, that's perfect. One roll, 36 frames. That's all Steve will have to shoot the final chapter of the Kodachrome saga. That's it. For 75 years, professional and amateur photographers alike have had a love affair with Kodachrome film. Its hallmarks, rich, true color, and legendary durability. But like all good things, its time is coming to a close. In 2009, Kodak announced it would cease production. There would be no more Kodachrome film. Digital is here to stay. It was an event that would have passed without fanfare. But one man saw an opportunity to pay tribute. And he asked for the last role. My name is Steve McCurry. I'm a photographer. I started my photography career in college. When I got out of school, the first job that came along was working on a newspaper. But my real ambition was to find a profession, hopefully in photography, which would allow me to travel and see the world. So after two years of the newspaper, I left. I got a ticket to India and went there with a couple hundred rolls of Kodachrome and started my freelance career. I got my first assignment from National Geographic. They liked what I did and they kept giving me assignments. I've done, I don't know how many stories, but I've been working almost continually for National Geographic for 30 years. I think most of my best photographs were shot on Kodachrome. I probably have an archive of around maybe 800,000 slides. Kodachrome really kept its color, and the color was sublime. Rich colors, not too garish. It was really the best rendition of reality. So when I realized that this was coming to an end, I, I wanted to have the last chapter in the book on Kodachrome. Here's the last roll right here. I'm gonna put it. When I loaded that last roll of film into my camera, it, it was kind of a strange feeling because I had done it thousands and thousands of times and it became second nature. To go back and do that action again was a bit strange, a little bit nostalgic, kind of a remorse somehow that this was the last time I would do that. Okay, there we go. It's all set, all ready to go. I've worked on so many assignments over the years, uh, and I wanted this to be something for me, something for my heart, something that uh, the photograph things that spoke to me personally. It's a luxury and a challenge few photographers can afford. For this shoot, he's carved out a six week window between other assignments. He'll travel where he pleases and foot the bills. Other than that, nothing set in stone. I don't really have any plan in terms of what I'm gonna photograph. For me, the most fun of photography is to walk out the front door of your home or the hotel and life is out there and you just improvise. It's really about observation, walking around and then discovering. And if walking out your front door lands you in the heart of New York City, that's a fine place to start. Even though I live in New York, I often don't really get out to look around and see these wonderful neighborhoods. 
Steve takes his digital camera along to try out potential photos. If he likes the test shot, he'll break out the Kodachrome camera. Washington Square Park, great location. There's all this sort of buzz and lovers and people reading and people with dogs and people playing frisbee. Chinatown is such a fascinating place because you really feel that you're in a back street of Hong Kong. Good pictures are made up of interesting situations, good light, particular moment. Uh, there's an element of composition and design that kind of comes into it. So you're constantly evaluating things moment to moment and trying to find something that's inspiring and you know visually interesting and uh, something that you you know that moves you there's certainly a lot to see but steve's not seeing a photo maybe the neighborhood idea needs a rethink perhaps he should focus on something more monumental you know, I was thinking that Brooklyn Bridge could be a great location, but perhaps for some security reason, they've closed off the best location underneath the bridge. And the place where you can get closest, it just doesn't work graphically, that the shapes don't fit together. The biggest challenge in Times Square is to try and sum up the glitz and neon in, in one actual exposure. Maybe it's better even not to do that because I, I wouldn't want to just come up with some sort of postcard image that uh, just shows all the lights and all that without it really being heartfelt and something that really is a human story. Undaunted, Steve presses on to another New York supersized icon. This is probably as good as it gets in New York City, right here. And I think it's an amazing place and um, I think it could really work uh, for one of my 36 shots. It could just as easily happen, maybe not in the Grand Hall at Grand Central, maybe it's in one of the lower corridors where there's some play of light and shadow and some little human story happening. Great locations, perhaps, but only one photo to show for all the time and effort. And 35 more before he can see what he's got. A far cry from the digital camera's instant gratification. Now the weather's turned nasty. It's cold, it's sort of windy, it's drizzling. There's not a lot of action on the street. Everybody's on their way to some place. You don't have any uh, anybody really doing anything. I mean, as a kind of a street photographer, I like getting people doing things on the street. When you only have 36 frames and you want to make each one special, you want each one to be an interesting picture, there's a lot of pressure you have on yourself because each picture has to count. And uh, the day it rained in New York, it was hard to work outside, and it just wasn't coming together for me. Time to regroup, refuel, and warm up. and it seems to be working. Steve's hatched an idea. I wanted something iconic of New York City. And then I thought, well, what about a personality like Woody Allen or Scorsese or Al Pacino or Robert De Niro? As it turned out, a lot of these people were out of town on film shoots. All that is but one. Hey, good morning. Hi. Steve McCurry. Pleasure Actor to Robert De Niro agrees to sit for a portrait. So this is the last role last of the Kodak film? Yeah, the absolute I last role. <laughs> He'll give Steve 30 minutes. Steve goes to work, firing off a few test shots with a digital camera. That'll work. De Niro lives in New York. He's a great actor. I've watched most of his films. And I think he has such a depth of talent and <laughs> presence. Get off the lens cap. <laughs> I just have an enormous amount of respect for him, his craft. You want to count and I'll just blink before. Yeah, I'll count on three. One, two, three. Okay, that's one exposure. And then I'm going to try one at four. 
By the end of the session, Steve's got three more frames Good. and a plan. Since every frame of this last row has to count, I decided to make a series of portraits. If you only have one frame, you can't take any risks about somebody moving or whatever. But you need to be very careful, very judicious. Portraits it is. Now it's a matter of who and where. To commemorate his reunion with Kodachrome, Steve decides to return to the place where it all began. After New York, I was thinking, you know, where else in the world can we go to continue this last role of Kodachrome? And for me, the most logical place, the most visual and culturally just amazing is India. One of the things that really attracts me to India is the vibrant colors. Color is really integral to Hinduism. In Mumbai, India's most populous city, Steve hits the street, scouting for faces. He's bound to encounter a few in Darvi. It's one of Asia's largest slums, with nearly a million inhabitants. My kind of photography is very much about searching and exploring and wandering and observing to really kind of get the vibe of the place, to meet the people. When you confront people with your camera and you ask people to take their picture, often they're a bit apprehensive or they're a bit shy or maybe embarrassed. But I think the way to break through that is to pick a break from shooting and just to talk to them for a minute. This is a good thing. This portrait we're going to work together on is going to be fun and interesting and respectful. I would start by shooting with a digital camera to examine the light, the composition, the design of the picture. And then once I felt everything was OK, I took out the film camera. I just took this camera out of the camera bag after being in the air-conditioned hotel and I'm going to give it a couple of minutes to, to sort of uh, acclimatize to the temperature. I don't want it to fog up. And he doesn't want it to move either. Steve sets up a tripod to make sure the camera stays rock steady. Normally when I used to shoot Kodachrome, as people's expression changed, I would photograph that change. That's always the reason why you shoot more than one frame. But with the last roll, with only one exposure per subject, you can't take any, any risks. Mumbai is also the home of Bollywood, a multi-billion dollar film industry. I thought that it would be fun to photograph some of the iconic figures in Bollywood, which is sort of the Hollywood of India, because we had started with Robert De Niro, and there's no more famous personality in, in India than Amitabh Bachchan. So we, we requested him, and, and he was very kind to accept. And there were three other very important actors and a director, which I thought would be a great addition to the piece. I thought Bollywood would be fun, and it's such an important part of Indian culture and, and the way of life there. One, two. Kodachrome it requires perfect exposure. Technically, you have to be right on the mark. Of course, another challenge when photographing a portrait is if the people blink, or the last minute their expression goes off in some way. So there's the exposure challenge, there's the expression challenge, and then there's a kind of a sharpness challenge because sometimes I'm working in extremely low light at a half a second or a quarter of a second. That's nine photos and counting. From Bollywood's opulence to Darvi's depravity, Steve's Mumbai portraits underline the city's extremes. But Steve's not leaving India without one more stop. It's a place close to his heart and a photographer's dream. There's no place in the world that has the depth of culture like India. So I thought, let's 
photograph the city of Bombay. And then let's kind of contrast it with a village and go to a place where these nomadic shepherds live in Rajasthan. Rajasthan is an Indian state north of Mumbai on the Pakistan border. It's home to an ancient tribe of Rabari shepherds. But rapid development and modernization have arrived, and now time is running out on their nomadic life. Their tradition, of this migratory way of life, is coming to a close extremely rapidly. And I thought, because Kodachrome's disappearing, this great iconic film, what better way to honor the film than to photograph and, and have a memory and a history of these Rabari shepherds that live in Rajasthan. It's really like going to another planet. Uh, the landscape, the way people dress, their traditions, the religion, the music, the food. Almost everything about it is kind of strange and also very wonderful. The people are very gentle and you know, hospitable. So I feel very comfortable in Rajasthan. I feel uh, at home. For Steve, feeling at home means being able to move freely and work unnoticed. The last thing he wants is a homecoming party. When we pulled up in our Jeep to this village and there was this big delegation there to receive us with the drums and everybody sort of singing and all this sort of commotion, I thought, yeah, this was like my worst nightmare because once the attention's on me, then the whole village, literally the whole village, comes to a stop and I'm the center of attention and it completely shut me down for some time. Eventually, the festivities die down, and Steve can start to roam the streets like a local. The people here are very interesting and very visual. Some of the nomads are entertainers, snake charmers. They tell stories. They're fortune tellers. So that's their job, to amuse people. But now they're having to find new ways to make a living. I think I'm naturally a shy person, and my first choice is not really to go up and kind of confront people and talk to people and ask people if I can take their picture. But it's something that I have to do, and once I kind of get warmed up, once I kind of the wheels start to move, I, then it becomes very natural, and I'm very happy and, and very interested in meeting people and talking to villagers. Very low. Okay, one, two, three, great. Perfect. Wow. Tell him I want him to come to New York. I mean, I could be his agent. He has, he, he tells fortunes. He yeah. does magic tricks. Yeah. He's a snake charmer. I think we could. I could I not know, but. I'm interested in photographing some of the Rabari women. The women wear these uh, bangles on their arms. That signifies that they're married. I'll try to They're a little here. shy. In this part go. of uh, India, there's a system called purda, and that means that the women are kept separate from the men, and they wear a veil, and they're not really supposed to be seen by strangers, and they often cover their face when you walk by. But one particular face catches Steve's eye, and he asks for a portrait. She has the, the traditional bangles, but she also has uh, the tattoos on her forehead, on her sort of her chest and then on her, her hands. So I wanted to photograph it again because this way of life is disappearing and these customs of tattoos will certainly change in the years to come. Steve starts setting up his digital That's camera right. to shoot a few frames when suddenly the session's interrupted. I was trying to get a sense of how I was gonna <laughs> take that portrait, but right in the middle of my sort of test, uh, she got a call about having to go out and do some work, cut some grass for her buffalo. So I mean, after she finishes that, hopefully I'll be able to meet with her again and take the shot with the Kodachrome. But the woman fails to reappear, destined to become the frame that got away. I think it's the whole face that tells the story. It's not just the eyes or the other features. I think it's the totality of the particular look somehow it all kind of works together to tell a story. 
it's not one particular feature, it's all of them working together. That's it. Perfect. After a week, Steve snapped 30 photos, okay. and he's ready to move on to any place that has air conditioning. This is our last day in Rajasthan, and we've come at the absolute hottest time of the year. The monsoon is due to come here maybe in a, a week. It's dry, it's hot, and it's just often unbearable. So that's the only challenge right now is to try and kind of stay cool. My last roll of Kodachrome is kind of winding down and coming to a close. I think we have a, a wonderful series of people. We have just a few more exposures left, so it's going to be interesting to see what we, we get. Duane's photo in Parsons, Kansas is the last place on Earth that processes Kodachrome. Grant, are you Grant? I'm Grant, are you Steve? <laughs> it took six weeks and some 30,000 kilometers, but Steve has shot all 36 frames. There it is, right there. There it is, Kodachrome 64. KPR. Now it's time to see what develops. It will take about 40 minutes for the roll to slither through the chemical bath. I saw the film going through the dryer, and when I saw it going through the dryer, I knew that we had images on the film. The last step, mounting the slides. but not so fast. Okay, this is not normal. Yeah, this is a good thing. An old-fashioned machine jam. And a time-honored remedy. Just give it a whack. At last, the slides start to roll. Steve is presented with the fruits of his labor. Okay, let's see. I wonder if there's any images on this roll. I sure hope so. so this is... All here and accounted for. Wow. I, I've just decided I think I'm going to give up digital photography and go back to Kodachrome. <laughs> Look at this guy. This is uh, a magician in India. Now that's just an amazing, amazing image. I'm very pleased with what we got, and I think it's a really wonderful range of pictures, starting with Robert De Niro in New York. In life, you respond to certain things, and I think as I'm photographing, I'm responding to the world in a, in a visual way. You want to communicate some of these things and say, you know, look what I saw or look what I've learned. I wanted to have at least one picture uh, of myself. But other than that, nothing scripted. We kind of go out and look for interesting situations, interesting people, and just try and make it as kind of off the cuff as possible. For Steve, the last roll is bittersweet, a reminder of what once was. It took me back to the days of film. It made me long for the colors and the tones and the hues of, of Kodachrome and how beautiful and how poetic the images are. Kodachrome was a great film and it'll be thought of with great fond memories, but all good things uh, have to come to an end. Frame number 36, one last dash of vivid color.
good man. In a fast-forward world that's turning digital, photographer Steve McCurry is pausing to document the end of an era. He's going to shoot the very last roll of Kodachrome film to come off the assembly line. There's just one question. What do you do with the last roll of this legendary film? Probably the best film ever made. That's good, that's good, that's perfect. One roll, 36 frames. That's all Steve will have to shoot the final chapter of the Kodachrome saga. That's it. 